Hey everyone, this is Megan with Able Cine, and I'm here to take a closer look at the Small HD 1300 series monitors. Now with me today that I wanted to dive into is the 1303 HDR monitor. I especially wanted to check out this model because of the HDR capabilities. It is very bright, it's a 1500 nits monitor, which is going to allow us to pull focus outside. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. First, let's talk about the specs of the monitor, and then we're gonna dive into the build and the menu setup. So it is a 1920 by 1080 monitor. It's 13 inch size, and I really like the build and size and form factor of this monitor. It really lends itself well to onset work, whether you're run and gun or on a big shoot as well. Let's take a look at the build. It is a 13 inch display. It's an LED monitor. There is a screen protector that you can have as well so that you can protect that on set. I don't have that on right now. Um, all of the buttons on the bottom here are very similar to the series of the 700 and the 500 series. If you're familiar with those, we'll go more into the menu in a minute. This monitor does have an SD slot and a, a USB slot, and we can use this for things like firmware, but even more importantly, we can do LUTs. So if you save a LUT that you've created on set or in pre-production, you can load it into the monitor and bring up, you know, according to which LUT you want to take a look at. The monitor also does have very standard log to linear LUTs from standard cameras. So if you don't have a creative LUT that you want to add, the monitor already comes with the log to linear LUTs to get you started, which is really a great feature. Let's take a look at the back of the monitor. The build and form factor is really nice and slim. A couple things I want to point out. I do have the baby pin mount on this, so I have it just straight to a C-stand here. I also have the gold mount accessory, which is allowing me to do power, obviously, through a gold mount battery. There's also a V-mount option available. Both of those have a PTAP 12 volt out, and that is what I'm using to go four pin into the monitor to power the monitor. It also has an OSHA cable that comes with it that you could power off the wall if you were able to do so in a studio, let's say. Um, it also has a USB function in the back here. Those are actually 12 volt out, so you could power an accessory that way if it was USB. If I flip it around here, you can see I have a Teradek wireless video receiver that's actually being powered off the monitor. So the monitor also has 12 volt two pin outs, which is really nice because that allows me to go straight from two pin to two pin on the monitor. And again, not have to have an additional accessory or an additional place to mount the power. The accessory I have here is the rapid rail accessory. This has multiple quarter 20s and it's how I am mounting the Teradek receiver. This allows for a really slim form factor, which is really great, as well as a solution that doesn't take a lot of time to rig. The monitor also has two HDSDI ins and both of those have an out as well. And then the monitor also has an HDMI in and an HDMI out as well. So now let's take a closer look at how to set up the menu and I'll show you how to set up a couple pages. What I like to do is set up a page for exposure tools and a page for focus tools. Let's take a closer look at the menu setup. We're just going to go ahead and set up two different pages, one for our exposure tools and one for focus. So if you want to go ahead and start one from scratch, I can say new page. And then if I go ahead and add a tool, you'll see all the different tools that we can add. So you can also do some frame lines, which is great. You can do some crosshairs, you could do safety, you could do a certain aspect ratio. And the last one is a crosshatch, which allows for a grid. And this is really great. I've used this before if I'm doing something more architectural based where I need the lines to line up exactly, or even for products to make sure everything is centered and symmetrical. If you've added one and you want to get rid of it, you can go ahead and delete it. So I'm going to do that for now because I want to set this one up as a focus page. So if I go to the lower ones here with this is my focus tab, I can choose focus assist. I can add that as a tool. Again, I can always toggle that on and off. But also, if you move the button to the right, I can set up specific settings of this focus assist. So you can change the color if you need to do so. The default is focus in red, which is what I have right now. If the image was really red, maybe you need to change the color. For now, I'll keep it as red, but one thing I am going to do is change the sensitivity. The default is setting to 5, but let's say you want to be even more accurate. I can make that a little bit less, and now I am really looking for detail. If this 
setup is really hard to pull focus, I can set it to black and white, and now you can see the focus in red is even more prevalent. So just a few examples of all the different things you can do. If I turn it off, here's my image, and if I turn it on, I have the focus assist. I do have this set up right now to wireless focus, so if I move my wireless focus unit, you can see the focus in red really permanently. I'm going to go to the actors here, so I'm looking for the red detail in their hair and in their face. Now let's say I want to set up a new page for exposure tools. I can go ahead and do that. That way I can keep focus and exposure separately. So here's my new page. Now I can add a tool. I'm going to go ahead and go straight to expose. One of the ones that's really popular is focus assist. So this is essentially your false color. Same thing, I can go into the tool and make some adjustments, toggling it on and off, but also you can choose the style. Right now I have it set to the airy style, but you can also set it to the full spectrum, or you can even go into the map and edit exactly which color you want for which exposure value to really get specific. Now that I've set it to the airy exposure assist, I can also have an IRE guide if I would like it, that way I know what each color value is. So with the airy one, it's really quite simple because I have underexposure, middle gray, skin tone, and overexposure. Let's say you want to add more exposure tools if you're using this as a DP or DIT monitor. Of course, you can add zebras. You could also look at a specific color within the frame, which is really great. One thing I wanted to show you is the scope page. You can have your histogram, your waveform, or your vector scope. I tend to use waveform the most, so I wanted to show you something with the waveform that's really neat. So first of all, obviously, here's your waveform. If I go in to edit it, you can change whether it's just brightness or if you want to see RGB or parade. I'm going to keep it at just brightness for now. You can also have it ignore the look, so if you are sending log to the monitor, you could have the waveform read log or you could have the waveform read the look. You can change where the waveform is placed under layout. You could obviously make it larger as well if you want to use it just as the waveform monitor. But another one that is a unique feature is the spot meter. So if I enable the spot meter and then you can change the size of that spot, but if I hit spot location and then I move here, you can see that the box is moving. So let's say I want to check out Luciana's skin tone. It's showing me exactly where that reads in the waveform, which is a really great tool to get really specific. So now I'm going to add the tool for the look. So if we go ahead here, let's add the tool. I am sending it a wireless feed from a Vericam LT, which is Vlog. So even if I haven't made my own, I can go into the internal camera calibration LUTs, and there is the Panasonic V-Log to 709. So now if I come out of here, you can see this is the 709 look, and then I can toggle it off to V-Log. In addition to that, if I have made a creative LUT and it's a .cube file and I've put it on the SD card, instead of just using the standard camera one, I can pull it up the custom one that I made which I made just a little bit warmer. It's a cube file, and then same thing. If I get out of here, I can have the look on or toggle it off. Another thing to take a look at in the general settings of the monitor is you can actually choose the color space for the monitor to display, as well as the white point, gamma, and then you could add lift and gain if needed. You could also decide, obviously, if it's setting the signal out, HDMI or HSDI. Here's where we can take a look at the brightness. So if I go into the brightness, I have it right now at the studio brightness. I can also choose standard range. And then I have the ability to change that backlight, which is what's allowing me to have the intense brightness, that 1500 nits for checking focus outside. There is a probe you can also add to this. It's from Small HD, and that way you can ensure that your monitor is calibrated. Another thing I want to point out is it does have anamorphic capabilities. So here in the anamorphic menu, you can choose which type of anamorphic lens you're using so that the D-squeeze is accurate. 
Well, there you have it. This is a closer look at Small HD's 1300 series monitors. This one was the 1303 HDR monitor. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll catch you next time.